Hello. In this video, I'm going to show a way to programmatically get and plot a waveform from a DPO MSO4000 series oscilloscope to your connected PC. To do this, I'll be using Python version 2.7 with PyVisa version 1.4. PyVisa gives Python access to an installed Visa on your computer. In my case, this is NIVisa version 5.2. NumPy will be used for fast array operations. Matplotlib is used to plot the waveform data after it's been acquired and processed. I'm also using PyScriptor as my integrated development environment. Looking at the source code, first I import the Visa module. I import NumPy under the namespace NP. I import unpack from the struct library, which will be used to unpack the binary waveform data from a string. And I import PyLab from matplotlib. Next I open a connection to my instrument, which requires knowing the instrument descriptor. This will vary from instrument to instrument and by the connection type. I can locate my instrument descriptor by looking in the Measurement and Automation Explorer under Devices and Interfaces. My scope is connected via a USB cable. With the connection now established, I can start writing instrument commands to pull waveform data from the scope. I set the data source for channel 1 of my oscilloscope, then I set the data width to 1, and the data encoding to RPB. This configures how the waveform data will be packaged and sent, but more on that later. You can also configure how much of the waveform will be transferred with the data start and data stop commands. When I pull the waveform data from the oscilloscope, it will not be sent as volts, but as digitizing levels. In order to convert these levels to volts, I need to get the scaling values. Ymolt represents the volts per digitizing level, Y0 is the value of any offset applied to the channel, and Y off is related to the position of the trace on the screen. X increment is the delta time between sample values used to create a correlating time array. Also notice that any information I retrieve from the oscilloscope is sent as a string. Here I convert my values to floating point numbers so that I can use them in math operations later on. Next I write the curve question mark command to the oscilloscope to start the binary transfer. And I read this data into a variable. A binary block is read into my variable in the format described by the programmer manual. It starts with a pound sign followed by an integer indicating how many characters are used to list the number of bytes that will be transferred. Next the number of bytes follow then all of my binary data. This is all read into a string in Python, which if printed out, looks mostly like garbage. In order to strip the header off the curve data, we add the number of characters in the bytes to be transferred plus two for the pound sign and the number itself. I then slice this off into sections as the header and ADC underscore wave. Next I use the unpack command to convert the string into an array of numbers. Notice the percent %s uppercase b here, which works for the type of encoding I'm using. This will work for 8-bit data, but sometimes you need more than that. The following cross-reference shows what types of data encoding the scope is set for and data width relative to what character should be used in place of the uppercase B in the unpack command. Next, I convert the array of digitizing levels to volts. Notice that each digitizing level first has the Y off subtracted, then you multiply by the Y mult, and finally add the Y0 value to return volts. A correlating time array is created next. For simplification, rather than taking the trigger point in the middle of the record as time zero, time zero is assigned as the first data point in the array. The x increment value is used as a time step between points. Finally, I use PyLab to plot volts versus time. I run the script and the plot pops up. Notice that the plot shows the xy coordinates tracking the mouse. I save my plot as a .png file so that I could use it in a report. Alternately, I could write the waveform data to a text or CSV file for later processing. Thank you for watching this video. For more information about anything you've seen here, please contact us at tektronics.com/support.